Hello, this is the Ramblings of an Indiscipline My Podcast for Monday, November 2nd, 2015. So NaNoWriMo has begun. Uh, I've got about 5,600 words written already. I'm not done today yet. I did a morning session at Starbucks and a little bit before I went to Starbucks. I'm going to actually do some more as soon as I get done recording this. Uh, so it's going going well. Um, I'm getting used to Scrivener. It seems to be going fine. I got a couple of formatty kind of things I like to change. Um, but all in all, it seems to be going pretty well. So I'm getting used to it. It seems to be working working nicely for me. What I thought I'd do today uh, is share an excerpt of the first chapter. It's not going to be the whole uh, first chapter because I think it's going to be too long. But I thought I'd share this one, this one section of it. Uh, I will warn you now; it's going to be non-safe, not safe for work. I will mark the episode as such. I've decided with this book, I'm going to make it a PG-13. So, because it's, I mean, this is a thriller, murder, serial killer thing. So there's going to be violence and there's going to be death, um, some light swearing. I'm allowing myself one f bomb just like a PG-13 movie. Um, And it's actually in the section I'm going to read you. I like my use of it just because it helps inform about one of my main characters. So I I like that I managed to make it explain a bit of of who she is. Uh, So I like that personally. Uh, But uh, so just be aware, you know, if you don't like language, if you don't like depictions of, 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 you know, dead bodies, which is what's in this section. It's kind of, we're going to see the aftermath of something, not see it happen in this particular section. Uh, then you may not want to listen to this one, and I'll be back to doing, talking about other things next week. Uh, or next week. Tomorrow. <laughs> I'm on vacation today. I'm just, my brain doesn't know what day it is. It's what day is it? I don't know. It's Saturday. Is it Monday? I got no idea. Eh. So I did get a good idea from my writing today for a title for this thing. So um, I'm I'm geeked about that. I actually created a thing that was like sample titles that I've I've got here. So it's a possibility um, of a title. So I'm not gonna share it yet because it may not be the one. But I like I do like that one. So we'll see what happens. So without further ado, here we go. An excerpt from my Nano Ramo 15 2015 work, um, which is temporarily called Baker's Dozen, but that won't last very long. By the time Ying Li reached the school, the bus loop was filled with a collection of squad cars and several ambulances. She added her sedan to the queue and got out, snagging her purse. She walked toward the main entrance, but halfway up the concrete ramp, she was stopped by a young man wearing the uniform of the St. Louis Police Department. Rookie, straight from the academy, Ying Li thought. The officer had clearly been making some assumption of his own, and he decided that a short, slightly overweight Chinese woman had no business at a crime scene such as this. He held up his hand to stop her. Ying Li was used to being underestimated, although it always angered her. Her age and ancestry made her far shorter than the average, and her love for pot stickers and Oreos accounted for the extra weight. She looked like an average mother, which she was, but she also belonged here. I'm sorry, ma'am, but you can't go in there. Hearing the confirmation of the rookie's obvious preconceptions cemented her anger, but she hid her feeling from her face, even though her shoulders slumped a little, giving her an even more dowdy appearance. So sorry, but I must get inside she said in a thick accent. Not possible, ma'am. This is a crime scene, and you have no place here. But I have business inside, she insisted. Not today. You'll have to come back another day. The firm tones of his unearned authority further incensed her, and she decided to drop the charade. She straightened her shoulders and pulled a small wallet from her back pocket. I don't think so, she said, her voice losing all traces of her ethnic heritage. She opened the wallet and showed him a small, shiny badge, not unlike the one that adorned his blue uniform. Detective Ying Li Woon, SLPD. She closed the wallet with a snap and gave him a sharp poke in the chest with a finger. Next time, check your preconceptions at the door and don't assume you know who a person is based on how she looks. 
He moves aside, stammering an apology, no doubt envisioning his burgeoning career shriveling on the vine. And why don't you stand at the bottom of the ramp, she said. You're obviously too green to be this close to a murder scene. He almost ran to the end of the ramp, obviously happy to put some distance between them. Ying Li clucked with disapproval and shook her head. She stood there for a moment with her eyes closed, then sighed, turned, and continued up the ramp to the first body of the morning. Five minutes later, she was crouched next to the still form of the guard when her partner arrived. She glared up at the chiseled form of Evan Haynes as he strode up the ramp. Good morning, he said with a grin that he probably used a devastating effect on countless women. Ying Li was immune. Problems with our newest colleague? You're late, she said, standing. You are supposed to get here before me, so I don't have to get through the gauntlet of Caucasian preconceptions. He made me swear. You swore? Evan said with a small frown, and I missed it. What did you say? F-bomb, if you must know, she replied curtly. Evan whistled. You better get to confession double time. She sighed. I'm not Catholic. I'm Presbyterian. So? So I don't have to go to some booth at a church and commence my sins, she explained, trying to be patient and mostly failing. I'm a Protestant, so all I have to do is pray for forgiveness and it is granted. And yes, before you ask... I've already done that. Evan grunted. He really wasn't into religion, but he'd like to twig Ying Li for her faith when he could. Despite this, she continued to put up with her partner as she had for the last five years. So, first victim? he asked, looking at the security guard with the bolt stuck in his left eye. Most likely, she said. Let's go inside and see what else there is to see. Given how many ambulances responded, I doubt it's just this guy. Stepping inside, they found another uniformed officer who gave them a map of the school with the location of the bodies marked with red X's. They looked over the grisly scene in the office, then began visiting the marked classrooms. I really don't get how you can believe in God when we have to deal with shit like this, Evan commented after leaving their fourth classroom containing a corpse. It's because we have to deal with stuff like this that I believe in God, she replied. Without him, I would have cracked up years ago. Evan grunted. This was his usual response when the topic turned to religion, and he'd reached his limit for the conversation. The next classroom on the map had a sign with Miss Morgan on the door. They found a pretty woman in her late twenties lying in a heap on the floor. She had more crossbow bolts protruding from her flesh, this time from the top of each breast. What is with the crossbow? Evan asked. Ying Li gave him a quick look over his shoulder from where she crouched next to the body. I mean, that's not the typical weapon for this kind of thing, he continued. This time, Ying Li gave a small grunt of agreement as she turned back to the victim. She saw an engagement ring of a, on a finger, a promise of a marriage that now would never be. How easy is it to buy a crossbow, she asked. And how do you know that's what did this? She indicated Miss Morgan as she stood and turned to her partner. Well, it's not from a bow, if that's what you're thinking, Evan said with a smirk. Crossbow bolts are shorter than arrows, more like elongated bullets. As for buying one, they're probably available from any sporting goods store. Or Amazon. Seems like the assailant had total surprise, Ying Li said. There were decorations scattered around the body, as if she was in the act of removing them when her visitor arrived. They're quiet, Evan said with a shrug. Unlike a gun, there wouldn't be much sound to alert others as to what is happening. Let's get to the end of this gruesome trail of breadcrumbs, and maybe we'll see who left them, Ying Li said, heading for the door. After a quick visit to the other indicated classrooms, they came to the two bodies sprawled on the floor. The wizened janitor lay on his back with the hilt of a knife embedded in his chest. Ying Li squatted to look at the man's injuries, trying to count the number of stab wounds. This is different, Evan said, walking around the body. Someone got angry, Ying Li said. My guess is the janitor struck his killer with that broom handle. She pointed at the broken piece of wood a short distance away. Makes sense, Evan said. This guy has a lump on the side of his head. He was standing over the second body, a Caucasian teenage male. Another of the crossbow bolts had been shot through the soft tissue behind the jaw. As Jing Li got closer, she could see the shaft visible through the boy's partially open mouth. In his right hand was a small crossbow. So he killed how many people here? she asked. Evan consulted the map again. Twelve. Odd, Ying Li said. What? Thirteen people died at Columbine High School, too. 
Think there's a connection? Evans asked, frowning. They both hated copycats. Too soon to say. Detectives, a voice called from down the hallway. I had the rest of the teachers gathered in the library for you. It was another uniformed officer. Thanks, we'll be there in a minute, Evan called back. Ying Li shook her head. Let's get to it, she said, knowing it was going to be a long day. And at some point she had to find that certain rookie police officer and apologize. The things I do for faith, she sighed to herself, and followed her partner down the hall. So there it is. An exclusive excerpt from my uh, NaNoWriMo 2015 book. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see as the month progresses if there's like a scene that I think is really cool. I might share more, but I'm not really planning on it uh, at this point. But uh, I, I thought I'd at least share a little bit of the beginning of the book. And I guess I'll let that be that for today. So uh, I will be back tomorrow and I'll be talking to you then. So be seeing you.